Welcome to the Godcast. Welcome back to Pushing the Issue with Rocky and Shadow. This What's is up? our second Godcast, and nice. we're super stoked on it. Yeah, this one should go better, hopefully. A little more prep anyways, sort of. <laughs> and I feel like we're getting better. I feel like we're improving, so I'm enjoying it. I guess that's up to the uh, the fans, though. We shall see. Oh, awesome. Um, before we do that, we, uh, we're not going to do our week in review this week. Instead, we're going to talk about something we discovered this week. We did a little more research. Two weeks ago, we did an episode about conspiracy theories, and we talked about anti-vaccination. And Rocky brought up a lawsuit with Bobby Kennedy, right? Bob, yeah. Robert Kennedy? Robert Kennedy Jr., Robert Kennedy Jr., where he, it's a case action lawsuit, um, and anybody who's taken a certain vaccine, and part of his argument, he says, vaccines aren't FDA approved, there's no FDA oversight. And we quoted Robert Kennedy, and as far as that goes, that was accurate, us quoting Robert Kennedy because he said that. However, we then proceeded to dissect it and talk about how we had heard that other places and quoted as fact. We have checked the FDA website and the CDC website, um, and they both say that vaccines are, there is FDA oversight for vaccines, right? Yeah. Yeah, I've seen it personally, and my sister-in-law was kind enough to correct us on it as well. Yeah. That being said, we don't know if the FDA is lying to us or not. That's part of the conspiracy theory joke. <laughs> but we, we did feel the need to teach the truth as we're finding it. And that's that's part of what we're going for is learning, researching, doing your own research and figuring things out for yourself. That's what we're trying to do. That's the whole point of this podcast. And so I'm actually kind of glad that we were wrong about something and that we have the opportunity now to correct it because it shows that we're open-minded and we're open to learning and being wrong. And and, and that's kind of what, that's what happens. Uh, sometimes people are wrong and too often, especially in the political sphere and in the in, in the debate sphere, People are so convinced that they're right that they're not open-minded enough to learn and grow. And that's that's all we're trying to do with this podcast, and, that, and we're happy to do that. And so we're thrilled to be proved wrong and, and redact that information and say we were incorrect, and this is, this is what it actually is. This is what we've learned. There is FDA oversight for vaccines. Yes. <clears throat> also, in my um, checking up on this uh – Robert Kennedy debacle. I watched a lot of Robert Kennedy videos and I should have known better than to trust him. (laughs) The guy is a bonkers environmental lawyer who told more lies just in the, uh, just in the, um, um, in the videos that I saw about, about the environment. So he, uh, he is not afraid to lie in public. And I assumed because he was a, he was a lawyer in a case he wouldn't blatantly lie the way he did, but he he lied so or, or perhaps is misinformed. I I also we also I also came off like super anti-vax, and I'm not. I realized how I got heated in the moment and realized I sounded pretty anti-vax. I'm not. Um, I just am pro freedom to choose whether your kids get vaccinated or not. So. Yeah. We're, we're very pro-freedom and not necessarily anti-vax. So I, I, I am the same way, and I, and I felt the same way re-listening to the podcast. I felt like we both came across as like super pro-anti-vaccination, and, and that's not the case at all. Uh, I plan on having my children vaccinated. but Yeah, and you actually said that, but I... Did I? I oh, never good. made that clear. So yeah. my um, I have six kids and they're all vaccinated. And um, there was a time when I considered not vaccinating, but it's just there's a lot of social pressure to get your kids vaccinated. And as far as I can tell, no, no real negative consequences. So the the benefits outweigh the right. So the perceived. Negative but I I am all for it. If you don't want to vaccinate your kids, then. Uh, don't vaccinate your kids. Yeah, indeed. Indeed. Okay, is that good? Good for me, bro. Good for me, too. Um, 
Let's talk about the Godcast. Sweet. Let's talk about God. So, in my mind, with the Godcast, and Shadow and I kind of talked about this, but not really, but uh, just the the format, we want to kind of talk about what we believe, and we kind of want to do it in a certain order. And and last time's Godcast was, was an obvious Godcast on Christ because it was the week before Christmas. However, um, this time we feel like the order should be, um, we, we'll start with, we want to discuss our belief in God, why we believe in God, and maybe discuss some arguments against atheist um, ideas. Uh, in my mind, it was... It was going to be a full-on, let's get some videos, listen to the arguments, pick apart the, the arguments. But uh, in researching this weekend and in uh, through some personal revelation, that wasn't the route I was prompted to take. So I'm just going to discuss, I'm going to discuss some arguments, but mostly it'll be why, why I believe in God. Yeah, and our our goal with this again is to get people thinking, get people open to the idea of God, uh, and, and perhaps some of the things we say will will drive people away from God. That's not our hope. Our hope is that people think and are open minded. That that is our goal, um, and obviously we want people to to move towards God because we we're. We're Christians. We believe in God, and and we're happy to, we're we're happier because of that belief in God. Yep. So you had some stuff you want to talk about. Would you like me to start? I I mean, sounds like you got a big finale maybe planned, huh? Uh, not not really, but you can take it away. Well, let's just go back and forth and, and kind of see where it takes us. Sweet. So, I I do watch a lot of videos on on um, all on all manner of um, topics but uh youtube knows to prompt me on atheist versus um christian or atheist versus jew or atheist versus deist debates um because i i thoroughly enjoy debates such as this so i've, I've seen a lot of debates but in researching for this podcast i i saw one it wasn't a debate, but it was two atheists talking about whether they could believe in God if they were presented with, um, I don't know, the right amount of evidence. They, it was whether they thought that a belief in God was a bad thing, which, uh, yeah, you have to be, I don't know, I guess you have to not have my life experience to to think the belief in God is a bad thing, but it, that's that's neither that doesn't have anything to do with it. One of the atheists was Richard Dawkins, a famous atheist, who um, yeah, he's he's one of those hero atheists that all atheists point to for brilliant brilliant arguments, and he said he said um. He said, sorry, my siblings are distracting me with their loudness. Um, he said that in order to create the solar system, the way that uh, stars produce the elements and elements drop the um, or and, and, and and that's what creates the universe is these stars or what creates planets, what creates life, everything is created in these stars, and then ejected, you know, and picked up by planets, the way our sun powers our planet. He said, in order to invent that system, God would have to be incredibly clever. And that was the argument. Like, he didn't know anyone that clever, so how could it possibly be that God created the universe when it takes a clever... And my thought was like omnipotently clever by any chance <laughs> like i don't i don't understand 
the, the it's weird to me when atheists bring up oh well you'd have to be brilliant to do what you say god does it's like yeah like omnipotent right like that that's the weirdest like like all knowing omniscient yeah it's it's all bizarre. powerful and all knowing yeah, so yeah we we believe that uh god is all knowing and all powerful that's why we think he created the universe i don't i i mean i know that all knowing and clever are two different things however Richard Dawkins is British, and I think maybe clever means smart in Britain. But either way, I think that omnipotence would bring some cleverness. Some, In order to get to the point where you are omnipotent, you have to be clever somewhere on the line, right? Yeah. So. Yeah. I don't know. And to my credit, you just said clever so many times that now and when I picture it in my brain, it doesn't even look like a real word. No, so nice. I'm not exceptionally clever, but I, I, I see the that omnipotence would carry a certain amount of clever. Like, that's just the facts. Part yeah. of being omniscient is being very intelligent yeah. and understanding mm-hmm. astro astronomy, astrophysics, all, all those things that comes in the, with the realm of. Sure. Um, and uh, I think it's Henry B. I- or Henry B. Eyring's father, the great, the great Christian scientist Henry Eyring, when asked about kind of this argument of, well, well, the universe is so magnificent and it's perfectly timed and there's all these things. He said, if you go into the desert and you, you're traveling in the desert for many days and you find a watch there and you pick it up and it's ticking, what can you assume about the watch? And the argument is, well, you have to assume that somebody wound the watch. And, and, th- and that's kind of his take on the same idea is that, yeah, the, the cosmos is this amazing, magnificent collection of, of events and, and bodies moving in unison like a great, vast watch ticking. And so somewhere along the line, we have to conclude that somebody wound it up. And, 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 and I'm open to that being a big bang, but something caused the big bangs uh, th- there's there's these things at some point somebody wound the watch of the universe and that's the reason that it's ticking sure and in in my mind the uh the precision of the universe lends it, itself far more to intelligent design than to and that's and and as far as the big bang goes th- is it more of a leap of faith to believe that god with all the evidence that we have of god the bible um in our case the book of mormon um and and you know not to mention the spirit the spiritual experiences you and i have and the the personal revelation we've received is it more of a leap of faith to go off all of that or to think that the universe just popped up out of nothing that that due to this random accident this explosion that just happened to be perfectly uh what's the word for uh eternal expansion the idea of universe. Uh, so, so there's this. I can't think of what it is, but it's a, a term for universal expansion where the universe is constantly expanding infinitely. And this random event of universal expansion happened to create a planet that was a, just far enough away from the sun to cause. Uh, a perfect climate for the development and a- evolution of human beings. I, I get the point that you're making. Is is that more of a leap of faith than to say, "Oh, somebody put it there, perfectly in place," or and and, and used natural process to proce- processes processes to do so? Well, and that's another argument for against um, atheist plan because, like you said, the Earth is perfectly distance from the sun and and we're led to believe in school i'm looking at my son who's in elementary school right now we're, we're led to believe that um every the, that we have millions of planets around us billions of planets around us which is fine i believe that as well you know god created worlds without number but we're led to believe that everyone has the potential to support life because just because it's a planet out there but then when you find out that it has to be if our it's like if our planet was 
like a hundred miles closer or something. It's it's a ridiculously small number of how much closer. And I've be. even heard numbers akin to four feet closer. Yeah, like, like unbelievably small. And, and I've heard a hundred miles too. I'm not really positive which one it is, but so yeah, don't again. I mean, from our conspiracy podcast, don't take us at our word. But these are the ideas, anyways. Um. You know, so the Earth is perfectly distanced from the Sun in order to make life possible. The fact that Jupiter is, there has to be a huge planet outside of the orbit of the planet like Jupiter in order to draw um, asteroids and comets away from the planet. And there's there's tons of stuff like that. And come, come to find out, there's like a minuscule number of planets in that we've discovered that could actually possibly hold life, have life on them just because they're in that, um, they fit the criteria of having all these things to because Yeah, because the criteria are so narrow and sure. so specific. Sure. Which in my mind, again, and and that's the, the thing with, um, leads me to what I, what I felt like I was prompted to say. There's, um, in the Book of Mormon, it says, I think it's, I'm not sure who it is. One of the prophets in the Book of Mormon says, uh, all things point, indicate God. Do you know who it is? It's Alma or Amulek. I'm not yeah, positive which, though. I knew it was either Alma or somebody else. <laughs> but <laughs> I'm looking at Shadow because he's the scriptorian king. king. But... Um, And that's that's true. Everything, and and the more we discover, in my mind, through science, the more the more things point to God, you know, and and you look at um, just the planet that we live on, you know. So life pops up on this planet. Um, it just so happens that there's oxygen to breathe, um, water to drink. Okay, that's good. Uh, plants growing that we can eat, other animals that we can eat, um, uh, uh, trees that we use to build shelter with, um, down to minerals in the ground that we can mine and 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 make microphones or computers, and uh, it's. Uh, we got a, a young visitor. Um, you know, all these things just fell into place. You know that, I mean, just the planet that we live on alone, the the way that we we can take the things. I mean, all this stuff is just here on this planet. Cotton for clothing. Um, you know, sheep for clothing. I mean. The list goes on and on. We can we can we can um, refine tar to make shingles for our houses. Um, I mean, there are there are there are rocks that are extremely pleasing to the eye that we cut into squares and build temples out of. I mean, that is a pretty extreme coincidence that we have all this stuff not only to survive on but to flourish and to, you know, it's a, and, and if we're made in the image of our creator and we've already established that our creator is a clever man, you know, it just, the more you delve into the things that we have on this planet and the way we, um, the way we can, again, thrive on this planet because of the things on this planet, it's just, that right there is enough yeah. for me to believe in God, um, and I, and which leads me to another thing that I needed to talk about, which was unless you did, you have something you wanted to respond to with that. Uh, I I kind of want to add to that. Yeah, I, I think um, I I like what you said about being made in the image of God because. I I think about it, and I think I've already proved I'm not I'm not the cleverest man out there. I'm really not. 
I, I'm passionate about things and I know a lot about some things. I, I think I know a lot about iron working. I think I know a lot about being a steel erector. Uh, and somewhere along the line, somebody had to be intelligent enough to create a piece of rod with chemicals around it that you can hook up to a machine that uses electricity to create molten lava to weld two pieces of steel together. And, and I, my intent is to sound a little bit dramatic when I say it like that. It, 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 that is my intention. It is a little bit dramatic when I say you, you're creating molten. It's basically a magic wand that creates molten lava using electricity and welds two pieces of steel together. Somebody had to be intelligent enough to figure that out and to bring all the right components in that he got from the earth that were provided by a loving God. And he had to be intelligent enough to do that. It, it, it's not that far-fetched. It's not that much of a leap of faith from that to know that a, per, a human being could do that, to say that there's a perfect being who put it all there, who wound it all up. Uh, so I, I, I don't know. I just, that, that was kind of my thought. Sorry. No, to, it's, if no, I killed your good. role, you know. No, you didn't. Um, and, and another thing on that is I'm completely open to the possibility that I'm not smart enough to, um, cause these, these atheist thinkers seem to have all the answers scientifically for why everything is created. They probably mm -hmm. would have a scientific answer for us having all of this stuff on here. But the thing that science fails to answer is why, you know, I have I, I, I struggle with, um, it, there being no reason for it, you know, and, and, and that, that leads me to what I was going to say about the argument between atheists and, um, uh, deists, which is, it breaks down often because the, the debate does because they don't give each other the benefit of the doubt. Atheists think that deists are taking the easy way out because they don't want to think that there's no purpose to life. Um, and oftentimes deists think um, atheists are taking the easy way out because they don't want to be held responsible for the decisions that they make in this life. And um, in my mind, atheism is not the way out, the easy way out. Um, deism is far less terrifying to me than, you know, going to bed in darkness, all this being for nothing. I, you know, I, for a long time, for the early part of my years, I struggled finding meaning in this life and I did believe in God, you know? And so I, I can't imagine, you know, thinking that nothing, there's nothing after this, you just die. Why, why would you do anything? Ex you know, accepting would, the nihilism. Yeah. Why would you do anything other than drink beer all day and you know why why would you go to work why yeah would, why would you get married yeah why would you do anything that was hard or that you didn't want to do why would you have children yeah yeah for yeah. sure that i and, yeah. and and that's that's a some people have that natural um motivation and i've just never had it you know, I've never had a natural motivation like that. I, I have to be motivated. And another atheist thinker, Sam Harris, says that's psychopathy. If you only th strive, thrive in a world where you have of consequences, that's psychopathy. So he says that when, when, when um, Diaz say something like, um, where do morals come from if not from God? And he says, well, you're a psychopath if you can't think morally without a religion in your life. And which terrifies me because I'm like, oh, maybe I'm a psychopath because I, I can't seem to figure that out. I have a really um, twisted moral compass and I'm sure part of that is from past mistakes but without um, explicit direction from a from Heavenly Father I don't I don't know where to go and even with explicit direction from Heavenly Father I struggle so I don't know interesting interesting it 
kind of makes a fella wonder. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, agreed. I just, yeah, it, yeah. I I don't know. I don't know if I know how to respond. Just in that, at what. Maybe I am a psychopath then. If that's the criteria, maybe I am. And, sure. and, and that would I, that would t- lend itself to the argument that the vast majority of people are. Well, and here's the thing. If, um, if that's the case, uh, thank goodness for a good God and good religion. Because uh, I'd be running around without any... <laughs> any direction you know i i people act like oh yeah i know i know better than to than to not kill and and you know that's not that's easy for me and i'm like i get annoying neighbors and i fantasize about their (laughs) about burying them in my backyard yeah (laughs) you know i i don't i i and and that's a maybe that's a look into my psyche and maybe um maybe everyone in the audience is losing my respect right now or is losing respect for me right now but i uh i really struggle with um why why can't i beat this guy up you know i don't know what he uh i don't know what um Sorry, I lost my train. Well, you, you don't know what would stop you from, yeah, from those yeah. behaviors. Like, it's, it, it, yeah, it's easier for me to think of, you know, walking right through a guy, you know, rather than trying to figure out how to deal with him. And maybe that again lends to my IQ, and maybe that's why I believe in God because I'm not very smart. But why? Why is it? Why? Why wouldn't I? And and I think that the smart move is to a neighbor gets inconvenient. Put eliminate them, them you know i don't understand why that's yeah. so unintelligent yeah. of, for people people think you're when when violence your is your answer they think you're some moron but i'm like uh maybe but i think intelligence shows that you want the easiest route to solving a goal and sometimes that is showing a guy that you that you are bigger charge. and stronger than he yeah. is yeah. you know or that you can sneak up on him and put a knife in his back you know i and, and I think for that argument, to, to lend itself to that argument, I think the easy and, and simple uh, test we have is bullying. Children almost naturally bully other children. And part of that, there, there are other psychological factors, obviously, bad home life, that, that kind of thing. But, but at, at some point... Children do that naturally. They, they and, and and perhaps we train it into them mentally, but it lends itself to the idea that without something to keep us accountable and to keep us moral, to keep us psychopathic, you might say, <laughs> at, at some point we'll naturally degenerate into the. The lead dog wins. The big dog wins. The big dog leads the pack. The, the, the fastest, the strongest, bigger, faster, stronger, that kind of thing. This idea of natural selection doesn't lend itself to morality. Yeah, no, no. Yeah. The, the morality of natural selection is very harsh. And I, and I believe that to be the morality of atheism is natural selection. Yeah, and yeah, exactly. And I... Um, I actually just heard a thing from C.S. Lewis about scientism. Have you heard anything about C.S. Lewis? Mm-hmm. So scientism is basically making science your religion. You know, religion and, you, of science, you, yeah. and he argues that the Nazis used scientism to justify their actions because they had scientific evidence that they were greater, a greater race than the Jews. Uh, it might have been flawed scientific evidence, but they used science and, to justify they, they all their actions. Called it science sure. in quotation marks. Sure. sure, and so that's right. Science is not morality, and I, I I've never understood people that that could get morality from science. You know, I don't. It, it was weird for me, but um, I never understood it. Like, well, I you know so. Uh, it sounds like I'll have to 
look further into that. Look at C.S. Lewis's thoughts. Yeah, he, I, there's some Science. interesting stuff. Mere Christianity is an interesting book. You gotta, I don't know if you've read that. I don't, and then the scientism isn't in Mere Christianity, but I've been listening to some Mere Christianity as well, which is it's a it's a heavy read though. He, he is a well thought out man. He is he is very very bright and and well. Uh, I don't know when is it when you can communicate better than eloquent. I eloquent eloquent there we go he's <laughs> very eloquent an eloquent and talented speaker and writer indeed indeed and a, and a great advocate for belief in God I Agreed. think that uh, he he will get the well done now good and faithful servant when uh, he I, I tend to hope so he gets up there <laughs> um, the screw tape letters is one of my favorite books I've, I've never read, read it but I think I'm going to look into it now for it, sure it is a frightening concept and uh, artistic representation of reality that is absolutely frightening but very very informative it, very well written an incredibly creative concept I'm, I'm not familiar with any other work that does anything similar to it Interesting. He, he teaches religion from the viewpoint of the devil and sure. it, is, it is fascinating hmm. so it, it's one of my favorites I've ever read and I've, I really struggle with mere Christianity just because of the depth and weight of everything he talks about he's so well thought out and there's so much there he just is a little bit smarter than i am but mere christianity kind of appeals to the the artistic side of me a little bit a little bit more so or the screw tape letters does um is there anything else that you were thinking about no i i'd love i'd love to hear what you have to say um when when we talked about this and and we're gonna call it in defense of God. Hopefully, if you're listening to it, you've already read the title. But that, that's kind of where we came from. Uh, and I took a little bit different approach. I don't, I don't listen to as much, or or as varied, of of media and uh, and thinkers and uh, people who are creating content on YouTube as Rocky does. Uh, I rely a little bit more on. On, on experiences that I personally have had. Uh, and so for this one, I went, I, I thought back to my mission mostly, and I heard this time and again, and it's, this is the main thing that I wanted to bring up, and if if we still want to continue speaking after I have more, but but this is the main thing I wanna bring up, and it's uh, this this question that was posed to me time and again that I don't know if we have all the answers for. And, and we'll probably close out on it with potentially more questions than answers. And I think that's okay. And I think that's part of the plan. Uh, but one of the main arguments against God that I heard as a missionary is, why would a loving God allow good people to suffer? And it, it is a, it's a poignant question because everybody has suffered some. Everybody has had pain. Even these people that we think have it so good, who are in our minds appallingly wicked, who who do things that are absolutely contrary to our idea of God and morality, and yet they're blessed in the world. They're happy. They have tons of money, or or, or whatever it may be that we see them and we think, man, they are they are blessed in spite of their wickedness. At, at what at what point does a loving God step in and 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 make things fair? I guess I, I guess that boils down to why is life not fair if God loves us? Is is what the question disseminates into? Sure. Did you? Have, did you I, I I have some thoughts. I, I was opening it up to you for thoughts as well. So I've never understood that argument. And may, I'm not sure if it's um, the way I was raised. Uh, anytime I said that's not fair, my dad told me life's not fair. And I, <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> and it's the most infuriating thing. Let me tell you, folks. Shout I, out to dad. <laughs> Boo that! <laughs> I don't understand that. God is not here to save our lives. God is not here to make our lives more comfortable. And maybe this is specifically because of the religion that we have because I get a lot of religious people who can't answer this question. 
and they struggle with it. And I don't because God's not here to save our life. We are here to come here to learn and to die. And any time I've suffered in my life, I've learned the most. And uh, I have an uncle who died of cancer. It was a horrendous fight for a year and a half. Um, he he used to joke that he was retarded. He, it made him retarded before it killed him, because he, it did. He 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 couldn't do anything. I my, one of my last memories of my uncle that I hate is me feeding him pot roast because he couldn't even feed himself. And um, maybe did we talk about this once already? I don't think so. I. Uh, I hate that memory because he was such a strong man, so full of life, and it was just so hard to have to feed him. But he learned so much from that experience that he, before he got cancer, he wouldn't even come close to getting a blessing. When he first got diagnosed, my dad asked him if he wanted a blessing, and he said, what good would it do? And by the time, a year and a quarter later, or maybe nine months later, I don't know, he, he was asking my dad for blessings and he, he was seeing visitors from the other side and he, he had changed and um, as tragic and as hard as it was and as bad as I hate that memory of feeding my uncle I'm glad he got cancer because God turned him to God God made him a being who is um, who is on the other side right now fighting for his family on earth in order to, um, and I, and, and if any of my cousins are listening, I'm not glad that my uncle is dead. I love my uncle, but, um, if that was the only way to teach him to love God, then, um, that's what had to happen. And God allows suffering. Sure. I don't, I just don't understand this if God loves us, why are we allowed to suffer? Because um, you don't become omnipotent like God without suffering. <laughs> without feeling a little yeah, pain. Yeah, I don't understand. God is the... Um, God is here to teach us. That's why we're here. We're here to, to, to live and learn and die. And I don't know if people know this, but dying usually hurts. You know, it usually involves. As far as I know, I've never died. Yeah, it typically involves suffering, and life is suffering. I mean, people suffer. That you will not get out of this life without suffering and without dying. So that's that's one of the stupidest arguments in my mind because uh, this is what life is: is yeah. suffering. Yeah, and and I think. I don't know. When I think about it, it's a it's a very it's an appeal to emotion. It, it's not a. It's not necessarily a logical argument. I don't think. No, not at all. And and th- that's part of what carries the power of that argument is that everybody can feel that. Everybody mm-hmm. has. Everybody can feel some sort of empathy to that question. And and it it touches on. The smooth platitudes of, oh, if life hurts, if life is pain, there is no God. Sure. And, and it, 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 it's a very smooth doctrine. It's very easy to swallow. It's an easy pill to swallow and an easy pill to take root because suddenly your Sunday's free. You don't have to go to church. You yeah. don't, uh, you can smoke cigarettes. For sure. For sure. So it, it, it's a smooth doctrine in that respect that when we look at it that way, without logic and with that appeal to emotion and it is a comfortable doctrine it's very easy it 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 can be hard to say yeah suffering is good suffering is very good for us uh you can't build muscle mass without breaking your muscles down and causing a lot of pain you can't do it. it 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 won't happen unless you're doing that unless you're breaking your muscles down hurting them ripping them tearing them so that they'll regrow stronger and firmer and better. Um, and it's the same way with life. It's the same way with coming close to God. Um, I feel like I need to address the... 
I am not glad my uncle got cancer, but I am um, glad for the lessons that he learned. And uh, I, I don't wish cancer on anybody, but um, I would not be surprised if my uncle's up there right now glad that he got cancer. Yeah. And because he knew he had to die at some point. And he's glad that he was brought closer to God through it. Yeah. Uh, and, and I think maybe by way of addressing that a little more, if you had the opportunity to know Uncle Junior, you were extremely blessed. Indeed. The man was one of the strongest, definitely one of the craziest, and, and one of the most enjoyable people to be around. And service-oriented. Yeah. yeah. You couldn't be around him without thinking that you were his favorite person on earth. Sure. 100%. Um, and he took care of people. He was teasing. He was fun. Uh, he was. He used to throw firecrackers at his employees when their freaking welding hoods were down and they couldn't see anything, and he'd throw firecrackers underneath them or blow up lighters underneath them. Uh, and, and he was wild, and he was a ton of fun to be around. And watching him get cancer was difficult. It freaking ripped our family apart. It really did. It was hard for our entire extended family because everybody was close to him. Everybody loved him, and he loved everybody. Uh, but in, in in spite of that, I think I I'm I tend to lean with Rocky on this one. I think he's looking down. I I hope that he's looking down on me and Rocky right now and saying. Yeah, it was good for me. I'm glad I'm closer to God. Um, and and that's the intent of suffering. That's the intent of pain. And sometimes being loving and being all-knowing, they don't really coincide with what I think is best for me. Well, I mean, you know, it's a perfect love. So sometimes... I think that most parents would agree, and most parents don't do this, but most parents would agree that sometimes um, you're better off just letting the kid make their own decision whether you agree with it or not, especially if it's not going to bring them harm. But it's hard, you know, as parents, we try and make our kids, we try and make our kids make the best decisions, and it doesn't always happen. It doesn't always happen like that, you know. It's uh Ag- agency is a fickle beast mm-hmm. agency right there there you have it and i i think agency is almost synonymous with pain and suffering oh yeah because sure. other people have it and we have it and it makes a whole big mess here on here on this this uh this place that we live this earth agreed <laughs> I forgot the word for earth that might be a problem um well, yes, we could, we could probably wrap up. I think. Oh, dude, I think we can give God the full hour if we want to. Dope. Let's keep going then. Unless, if you're bored, shut it off. What do we care? We're just here to hear ourselves speak. Yeah, we just we just like the opportunity to hear <laughs> ourselves speak. Um. Unless yeah. you were done, of course. I thought you had more arguments. I guess. Uh, I don't know. I don't know how relevant they are. They're all kind of branches of the. Suffering, suffering one. Okay. I, I think we covered that one very efficiently. Sure. I was I was surprised by how efficiently we covered it because we're usually pretty rambly and bad at speaking. <laughs> and, and we don't speak so good. Sure. Sure, sure. So, um, so you don't have another point to bring up? I don't. So I just want to say... Um, my problem with my past is I knew I never doubted God existed. Um, I sometimes I would say I did, but I never did. I I was I was fighting God through my rebellion, and uh, um, I made some grievous mistakes because of that. But I uh, I often find myself when I when I get low praying to feel God's love and uh, um, he, he always comes through uh, if you pray to feel his love he wants you to know that he loves you and if you pray earnestly you will feel God's love um, yeah. I have an experience but I don't think it's podcast appropriate well yeah so 
So perhaps if you want to it's, hear the experience, you can give Rocky a call. It's yeah. all our listeners still know us. It's appropriate, but it's not. Uh, I don't. I don't think I'm supposed to share it over the World Wide Web. But um, yeah, so I'm. I just. I just promise everyone out there: atheist, Christian, Jew, Buddhist. Pray to God, and ask to feel His love. And if you and if you intend to feel God's love from that prayer, you will feel it. Uh, no matter how low you are, no matter how rough a day you're having, um, that prayer to Lord, please help me to feel your love t- throughout this day or, or at some point in the day, you will. I promise you will. If you have real intent, don't go say a stupid atheist prayer just trying to prove that it will prove me wrong. But if you have the intent to feel God's love, you will. He's eager to give it to you. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I think we're, I, I think we're going to close on this thought. Um, and I want to share a testimony similar, similar as Rocky did. Um, but I, uh, I asked a member of my bishopric and a member of my stake presidency about. Uh, I asked them that question about suffering before I came up here. We had we had a meeting with them. Our whole our our apartment did but uh the member of my state i said in 60 seconds or less how would you answer this question and the member of our state presidency was uh the question of the question of suffering yeah no the the question why about, would a loving why would god, loving god allow, allow us to suffer, suffer. Okay. and i said in 60 seconds or less what would you say and both of them were kind of like oh, that's a lot to talk about in 60 seconds and clearly because we spent 18 minutes on it but uh um, but my stake, the member of my stake presidency gave a really uh, eloquent and well-worded and personal story about it. And it took like 15 minutes. <laughs> and he just went off. It was something he was really passionate about. And he was so fired up and what he said resonated with me. And I felt the spirit. And it was beautiful. And the member of my bishopric spent 40 seconds talking. Ju- just like I asked. And this is what he said. He said, I hear that all the time, and my immediate response is, but what about all the good things? And then he he just named some good things that I would never say out loud because I guess my masculinity is fragile. He said things like, what about when a baby smiles? Or when the leaves change? And it was really beautiful that he just cared about those small, simple things in his life. And he was like, they're so beautiful. The, the, the suffering isn't the only thing we need to focus on. There's so many good things too. Um, and, and, and with that in mind, just this idea of beauty and, and power. Or like Rocky said, all things denote there is a God. Um, he, he is eternal. He's majestic. He's magnificent. And he creates majestic and magnificent things. He created each and every person on this earth. And they're unique. And they're magical. And they're wonderful uh, and, and and some of them suck. That's the that's the nature of the beast, but they don't. To God, He loves them all because He created them, um, and and He created this world around us. He created things for us to appreciate. And so, just kind of to finish up, I want to say, I do believe in God. I believe in God. I believe that He is, and I believe that He loves us. Um, and and all the arguments in the world can't change one fact. My life is better because I believe in God. And I am happier because I believe in God. And if I did not, my life would be worse. <laughs> and my wife, life would be more unhappy. And, and, and so that's kind of the thought I want to close on. Is, that, is there anything else you'd like to say? Nope. I, I just want to echo that sentiment. My life. I tried my life without God. <laughs> it sucks. <laughs> he did the experiment. Yeah. He knows. Yeah. So. So with that... Consider the issue of God pushed. Yep, it's a uh, it's an important one, folks. So we hope you uh, you give it thought, if nothing else, from this podcast. So, so have a great week and God bless. Yipper. <laughs>